Okay, so we are going to diagnose another printer with issues. This printer, it seems that it will move up easily, but on the way down, it's binding. So let's do our basic evaluation, which is we try to move it up and down on the left side, look for loosenesses, and compare that to the right side. As you can see, the right side has a whole heck of a lot more looseness. That means that things weren't sequenced properly. So the first thing we're gonna do is fix that. So if we wanna go over a proper and full resequencing, I'm not gonna explain all the details because that's in the previous video, but it would look something like this. Loosen the top rails. So now this top piece is loose. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen the bottom rails as well. Now, what we've done by doing that is we've freed up the rotation of these rails so that when we tighten down this eccentric and we form the triangle of force under your center pressure, we're also slotting these V wheels into the V slots, which forces this to rotate in the right position. So that's why we have all four screws that go into this rail being completely loose. So, Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to check all the pressures. So what we want is the eccentrics to be tight enough that they're cantilevering well, but not so tight that the eccentric doesn't turn. It should be a little sticky. It should give you some resistance. Like this one is way too tight. So we're gonna loosen up the nut. Okay, now that we've checked our eccentric pressure, we are going to double check that these two screws are loose and that the two black screws on this plate are loose. So we want this about two turns loose. And then I'm going to loosen two black screws on the back side of this plate. All right. That plate's been loosened properly. It should be able to move freely. Okay. Next step, we are gonna tighten the centrics until the wheels don't move at all, any of them. Okay, those are tight. All right, these are tight as well. So now that these are tight, we're gonna move all the way up to the top, double checking that we have our protection on the rails. And then we're just gonna go ahead and lock in this distance, the centers of these rails. So what I do is make sure that this rail lines up at the corner, lock it down, and then do the same for this corner, lock it down. And then because this defines the distances, you never wanna change that. So we go ahead and lock it in and give it extra tightness, more than the torque limiter on the tool can. So in this position, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the black screws. And we're gonna tighten the screws that are here letting the nut do most of the work once we start feeling resistance. Okay, so that has set the distances. We're now gonna move this down. If you find resistance, usually bending the back plate here will free up the resistance. 
So right now when I push here, it doesn't work. That's because everything's unconstrained and wobbly and loose. So focus on the brass bracket itself. Worst case, you can rotate this rod if you have to, or down here at the coupler. But the point is, bring this thing all the way down while the eccentrics are still tight, move the bed out of the way, and we are going to tighten the loose rails. Okay. Now with the bottom tightened, we can move this to the center position. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the eccentrics and then lock down the eccentric lock nuts. So loosen these until you start to feel the eccentric wheel spinning ever so slightly on the right side. And a little tighter than that on the left because the left side leads, the right side is cantilevered. So once I see this wheel spinning, I'm gonna actually tighten it until I start to feel resistance to it spinning even a little bit past that. So now when I go and do that test that we started with, see how this isn't moving up and down nearly as much. It's far more rigid. That's what we want to see. But we have a new problem. Let me lock this eccentric down so that it no longer can be adjusted and we'll move on to Z motor QC and recalibration. Okay, so the problem, Z motor only goes up in one direction. It's actually a fairly simple fix and the solution is sequencing as is everything. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check that we have all the right parts. So the first thing in the check is to make sure that there are washers under the screw, just under the head, and just above the brass. So there should be two per screw. We're gonna go ahead and loosen these so that their spring washers are just starting to come out. I don't know how clear that is on camera, but I'll try to zoom in. So this is too tight. Your spring washer is just a washer. And this is too loose. The spring washer is not engaged. So get it to the point where you're just engaging the spring washer. It's a little bit loose and the end result will be able to move up and down just a tiny bit. You can kind of hear it clicking. That's good enough to start with. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the four motor screws. So there are the two black screws here. Go ahead and loosen those. And then there are two silver screws, which are two millimeter hex. Loosen those. If you've done that properly, your motor should be able to move side to side and the coupler should be able to move in and out. Why do we want to do this? Well, we have a Z system here, but there's nothing to say that that Z system is in any of these planes or dimensions angled or aligned in the right way. Um, also, since we're on the topic, let's go ahead and resequence the coupler just to make sure that we are all at the same starting state. The way that we do the coupler, and it should be this tight, so don't be surprised. It's hard to take out the bottom one. A weird solution is to actually tighten the top one a little bit. Sometimes that gets it working. Otherwise, the person may have just cranked down on this one way too hard. Wow, that one's really... dust coming out of it. So let's go ahead and start as if this was a new build. First thing we're going to do, put the coupler on, make sure that it's flush. The way I do that is pushing up and rotating. Now tighten the top one about quarter, eighth, eighth to a quarter of a turn. As a convention, we line up this slot with this flat. Go ahead and push it down all the way. If it doesn't want to go down, loosen some of the screws. Now tighten the bottom nut pretty much to what you until you hear it straining and squeaking and if you don't tighten the top one you can actually have this threaded lot rod get pulled out. 
So that's your starting state, but this thing can still move side to side and front to back. So what do we do? Move this print head up a bit and then down again. That's just a convention so that we have forces that are consistent. We want to push down and kind of let it center itself. Go ahead and tighten down the silver screws just a little bit to the point that it can no longer move the black piece versus the motor. Then what you're going to do is move this rail system all the way down. And the reason is the position of this brass piece will help constrain the motor from moving side to side too much. So just like before, push straight down so we have a consistency in where we are. Go ahead and tighten these screws a little bit. You don't want to overdo it because it is going into a plastic piece and too much compression on it will warp it and actually cause the motor to go askew. So once you've done that, you should feel that the system is smooth. But here's the problem. We still have this bracket getting stuck. It doesn't want to go down. Watch what happens when I bend this bracket. Now that makes sense. Why? Well, this is a piece of sheet metal. You can't bend a 90 degree angle unless you go beyond 90 degrees. So whoever bent this should have done a little bit of better job to ensure that this was a 90 degree angle. There's a fairly simple fix that usually works, and that is to, I believe, loosen the front screw and tighten the back one. What that does is it angles the brass so that it better, better matches where this threaded rod is running relative to this piece. Now, if that doesn't work, you can try it the other way. Well, that's impacted in both directions now, so that's not working. But we've done the proper sequencing. So if we've done that and we're still not getting anything working, there's only one solution left. And in this case, it looks like we're going to have to bend this piece back down. So we're going to grab an adjustable wrench and a piece of paper. And we're just going to give it a little bit of bend. And you'll see how powerful this is without me even putting any bending on it. Just by having the weight of the wrench here and touching it just a little bit, we should start to get some motion out of it. So that shows us that bending would be a good solution. And go ahead and loosen these screws back to being even again. Now this is just to protect the finish. If we didn't care about that, we wouldn't use it. So it'll feel like you're bending it maybe 10 degrees when you're doing this just to get one degree out of it, but that's it. So we now have a system that's much more trued. It's smooth in both directions. The rod isn't whippy or wobbly. It's tight on this side and on this side. And that's ideal.